Okay, let's see here. The other day, Jen did a redesign, not a redesign, a design hack on the uh, new traffic secret sites that's coming out from Russell. And first thing I want to do is take a look at what they did inside the traffic secret site itself. And then what we'll do is we'll take a look at a much, much simpler way of getting this done. So the first thing let's do, let's just right click and inspect inside of the element. As you see here, what, what we're looking at is how they got these, uh, these lines running like this on, a, on an angle coming down. And of course, these two lines are parallel with each other. So let's just take a look at how they did that. What they used is what is known as right down here, clip path polygon. So clip path basically says we're going to give you a bunch of numbers and it's going to create a path which is going to create the shape of the design and a polygon just simply means it's going to be essentially four-sided uh, but not square or a rep tangle if i remember my geometry class correctly so what how this works and i'll just show you how it works here let's in fact i i copied it out here which we're not going to see i just realized because i don't have my whole screen set up so it's going to be kind of small down here but it says clip dash path colon polygon and then it has four sets of numbers it's zero zero one hundred percent ten percent 100%, 100%, and 0, 90%. And what that represents is the four corners of our polygon. So you come in here and you see if I highlight over this, it would obviously normally be a square cornered, 90 degree cornered rectangle, but because of the number changes that we put in here, it will change it, of course. So how this starts off is a zero and zero. So you start off on your X, Y axis in the upper left-hand corner, and you start off at zero, zero. So it's zero X, zero Y. So then what we're gonna go to is we are going to go to 100%, which means all the way over here to the right on the X axis, and we're going to go 10%. So it's gonna go from 100% up here down to 10% down. I'm, so, I'm sorry, I said 100%, I went from zero. It goes from zero to 10%. And for the next one, then it is 100%, 100%. So again, starting from here, we got 100X, we got 100Y, which brings us all the way down here. And then we repeat, we come back to 0X, 90% Y. So instead of being down here where 100% would be, it's up here at 90%. And then it knows to automatically go back to the original number. So now let me just show you. If we click in here and let's take where we had over here 100% and 10%, uh, if we make that number smaller, the 10% number smaller, that is now five. And so we can make it the other way as well. And we can go up to 20. Now let's say we want to change the 100 on that same point. We can just make that smaller and we can bring it in. So as you see, you can use this clip path polygon to make a shape of any, well, make any shape that you want. There's also a circle function and an ellipse function, I think. I, don't, I haven't worked with it a whole ton. It It is problematic though, and it does cause a few problems. And uh, one of them is uh, inside of one of the mother funnel templates, they used it in there and it really just completely jacks up the template. And um, so I kind of shy away from using them. Plus, there's not a lot of cases where you need to. But one thing you're also going to see here is I pulled this down. You're going to see is that the top section as well has that same polygon on it. So let's click on the top section and you come down and again they applied the clip path polygon here and frankly i don't think there's any reason to have done that because on the section that we're dealing with they also had a negative top margin of 10 which would have pulled it up over the top anyway so i'm not really sure why they felt it necessary to do the polygon on both and then the third thing you're going to look at that they did here is they did this as an at media screen query, meaning that once we have uh, less than 761 pixels, then 
it will uh, stop doing the clip path and it'll go back to just being a regular old rectangle. And so that means that once it goes into mobile view, it'll just snap back into having its normal square corners. So they went through a lot of work in order to do this. Well, let me show you a much simpler way to do the exact same thing. And what I have here is I have a, a, just a quick little template. I have the background set to yellow, and the only reason I have that is so that as we're working, we can see uh, where we have gaps. And what I would do in the event of building this, actually, I would turn that um, background color to opaque because otherwise, as you saw as we came into the page, that background color will always pop first and then everything will build basically over the top of it. And so anytime you're like going into something and you see like an image pop first or a color pop first or something, just go into the background and just take out the background if you don't need it because um, it's it's in there and it's completely unnecessary and it pops and it kind of looks dopey as far as I'm concerned. So here is the simple fix on how we're going to do this. We're going to come into this section and I'll show you the CSS in the end. But we're going to come into this section. So let me just right click here and we're going to inspect. And so we got um, our section here. And all we're going to do, and I already have this built into the CSS, so I turned it off. So now I'm just going to turn it back on. What we're going to do is we are going to do what is known as a transform function inside of CSS. And I don't know if function is the right word or not, but uh, we're going to do a transform. And we are going to skew in the y direction two degrees. Now I notice that mine is off just slightly. There seems to be, well, actually, let me refresh the page because I was playing around with this. Let's see what theirs looks like. So it looks like they got a little bit more of an angle here. So let's go back to ours. And instead of two degrees, let's come in here. And uh, nice thing is you can do this in decimals. So we can come in here and let's make this two point one degrees and just give it a little bit more. Maybe we'll just go 2.2. Either way, as long as it's relatively close. Now what you're going to see is that obviously everything got skewed inside of here. You can see everything's at an angle. And um, actually, if you come here and you click on this, yeah, actually the blue, blue goes straight. And so it gets a little wonky right away. So all we have to do is to come into this container inner and we'll click on that, and we're going to do the same thing, except we're going to do it in the opposite direction. Now, if you just target all the container inners, what you're going to do is you're going to hit all of them, and then they'll all get skewed the opposite direction. So all we need is just make sure that we target just the one that we are working on, and we're going to make that also 2.2 degrees, and then it lines everything back up straight. So we went positive 2.2 to bring it down, and then we went negative 2.2 to bring the other one back up and make it level again. And so now we have an issue of we got a little bit of yellow space here. So we'll come into this section, and we're going to put in minus 25 pixels is what I think should be enough to cover it up. And let's see. Yep, we don't see any yellow there. And then we'll come into the bottom one, and we're going to put in negative 25 pixels as well. So we'll just take that out, minus 25, and that will bring it up as well. Now, what should happen is the bottom section should come up over the top of this middle section, and we'll see if that happens or not. And then the other thing, like I said, as soon as I'm done testing this, I'm going to get rid of that background color of yellow so that, well, actually, I'm going to leave it in there. Let's see when we preview that if that yellow color flashes first. Because, again, we wouldn't necessarily want that. So let's click on preview and see what happens. Um, okay, so it didn't, didn't flash it, but I've seen it do it that stuff plenty of times and did it do it right i see we got a little bit of yellow here and a little bit of yellow there uh let me refresh that okay so we need to clean that up so let's bring this up just a touch let's just make it minus 30 and then we will make the other minus 30 as well. So like I started to say is this bottom section in theory should come up 
over the top of the middle section because normally when you do negative margins, the section that is below will come up over the top of the one that is above. But in this case here, for some reason, it's not doing it. If it were to continue to do it, then you'd want to put in a positioning relative and change the Z index to a number greater than one. And then it would go over the top like we are doing now. So let's just click on save and we will preview it one more time. And I think that is really it, except to show you real quickly what the actual final CSS look like, but otherwise this looks like it's supposed to. Um, so let's go in here and I'm losing my voice for some reason today. So let's go into our CSS. And again, here it's pretty simple. It's exactly what we just showed you. Um, well, in fact, I didn't change it here. So let's do the 2.2 and the 2.3 and the 2.4. And then save that for real because otherwise everything I was doing was only over here in the in the editor and it did not change it in the CSS. So that is it. If you got any questions, feel free to reach out. Have a great day.